A tree diagram can be used to list the outcomes of experiments that involve two or more steps. So, like, if we had, firstly, we flipped a coin, we either are going to get heads or tails. So from nothing, there's our first branch of our tree. Then if we flip another coin, we could, again, heads or tails, which would give us the outcome of either heads and heads, heads in the first coin, heads in the second coin, or heads and tails. Those are the only two options there are. If we had flipped the first coin to tails and then flipped a second coin for heads, we'd get tails and heads. And if we had, again, tails and flipped tails, we have tails and tails. So with two coins, this is the total possible number of outcomes, and we've represented that as a tree diagram. So at this stage, we'll only consider tree diagrams for which each branch corresponds to an equally likely outcome. So, I mean, a coin flip is 50-50. So here, a fair coin, three fair coins are flipped. List the sample space using a, t, a tree diagram. So we have coin one, coin two, that says coin, holy moly, and coin trois. So I'm going to start way down here. So coin ones could have heads or tails. So those are our first branches. Those are the only two options. Coin two could have heads with heads or heads with tails or tails with heads and tails with tails. And then we have another coin. So we could have, the first coin could have hit heads. Oh, let's just let's just connect each of these. Heads with heads and tails, tails with heads and tails, heads with heads and tails, and tails with heads and tails. So the sample space here is gonna be, if I go from this one, heads and heads, and heads. Here are my outcomes. So this will be my, my sample space as well. I could have heads, then heads, then heads. Or following that same branch, heads, then heads, then tails. Then I still have heads at the start. Heads, then tails, then heads. Or heads and tails and tails. So that's the end of that branch. Then we'll get down here and start with tails. Tails and heads and heads. Tails and heads and tails. These are all the absolute possibilities in order. Remember, these are coin one, coin two, coin three. Tails and tails and heads. Tails and tails and tails. So this is our sample space. These are all the possible outcomes. How many possible outcomes are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight possible outcomes. Find the probability that the first coin is heads, and the next two are tails. Tails, tails. Well, there's only one option there where the first coin is heads and the next two are tails, so that probability is a one in eight chance. Now we'll find the probability that exactly two of the coins, exactly two of the coins show heads. Well, I'll put that in a box, shall I? Two of the coins. Oh, that's not exactly two. Hang on. That's not exactly two. That's more than two. So exactly two. There's one, two, oops, two, three, three, because that's too many. One, two, three. So that would be three out of the eight. And that's how we find the sample space and work out just how many possibilities there are using a tree diagram.